Hello, hello, everybody. It's 8.44 p.m. Central Time on the 30th of April, 2023. Sunday still in the United States, Monday already internationally. I hope you're doing well. We are here to talk about earthquakes. We're looking at Earthquake 3D, the program, in case you don't know what it is. And uh, we're using the USGS, the Geophone Potsdam out of Europe, the Australian feed, and a few more to give us a good view of what's happened over the last 48 hours. Speaking of a good view, how about the new backgrounds here for my operation on Twitch? I don't know if you guys will see all these. Again, uh, Duchess has made several of them. Uh, uh, I've got about four, 40, four zero, four zero different backgrounds now to use everything, just all kinds of cool stuff. I mean, she really went overboard above and beyond. So if you're watching on the live stream on Twitch, you get a, a, you know, a few added benefits you get a few added benefits to watching on the view there on Twitch. Now, let's go ahead and turn on a display capture so that you can see what I see. And we'll get started over here in the West Pacific with our deep earthquake activity. So, we had a new deep 6.7, almost 7.0, followed by several other deep earthquakes, which you see still raised high off the globe here, or off the planet. And... This deep earthquake activity, we are watching for shallower, larger earthquake activity to pop off in the next several days, up to a magnitude larger than the 6.6. And we watch next to the deep earthquakes for shallower, larger earthquake activity to come up. Now, I'm going to open an earthquake down here, down south of Australia, and actually let me get the USGS map open here really quick. Hold on. I don't even think I've got it open. Ugh. Hold on. Got to get this open. So I'm going to show you the Indo-Australian plate boundary. We're going to go around here, around the outside edge of the Indo-Australian plate here. And we go down to the south, over to the west, and back up around. We go up into Asia. Now the earthquakes over the last week have gone around the outside edge of the whole Indo-Australian plate all the same size. So the same sized earthquakes going around the plate, what does that mean? Well, something's coming up from down below it, and it's displacing the whole plate. So back over to where the deep earthquakes are coming up. We've got a warning going north of New Zealand for a potential large earthquake up to a magnitude larger than the 6.6. .6. And we have to warn everybody from the North Island of New Zealand all the way to Fiji when we're talking about this size of an earthquake. We get up above that 7.0 range. You really want to get the warning out to people within about 500 to 1,000 miles of the earthquake epicenter, I think, personally. Now, one of the things that's just a little fine point on this, literally, Dutch since, period. Where the earthquake is, at the backside of my underwater base, down south of Australia. So that being said, let's go to the north and check it out and see what's happening up here in Japan. We also have a warning going for four more days north of Japan for the same sized earthquake that we're also going to look for down here at New Zealand in the 7.0 range. Upper 6, low 7 is due here, and I'll say probably low 7 in the Kuril Islands. And we still have several more days to go in the watch for that as well. We have warnings going for the west coast of the United States. We're watching for a 5.5 to come in up in Eureka, California. And so many viewers contact. Look at this huge stack of earthquakes here. See that? That's an earthquake swarm taking place in southern California, right down at the border next to the volcano there at Salton Sea, which we will get into in just a moment. But back to it, we'll go over to the west and jump over to Europe, which is the way the flow normally goes. And our other warned area was struck. Myanmar, right in the middle of Myanmar, right on the plate boundary. Now that's two times now where I've issued the warnings for noteworthy earthquake activity to break out. And two times now where we get almost the same sized earthquake in each spot. But it's not a big quake. So let me just recap. I warned right here and it got hit, obviously, 4.4. But that's way less than what I'm looking for. Then I shifted the warned area to here as the halfway point, And now it's been hit. 
by a 4.5. So each halfway point is getting hit. Or is it? Because this gets me into the earthquake up here on the opposite side up in Alaska. Look, guys. I, I, I shed a tear last night. I did. I, I was going to do an update last night. I got really bummed out. I actually got really depressed and down. And I was, like, getting misty-eyed at all the problems that I've ran into over the years. You know, sometimes it piles up and you start to think about all the past. And, you know, it's just kind of, you know, you start to think about how hard life sucks. You know, anyway, say I, it fell on me last night when I had issued a warning for a 6.0 earthquake to strike next to Vinyaminoff Volcano. And Vinyaminoff Volcano is right here next to where this dark splotch is here on the Alaskan Peninsula. And I warned for a 6 to strike between here and out to here. Then, three days later, four days, after I issued the warning for Vinyaminoff Volcano yesterday... A 6.2 earthquake gets reported two days ago now, 48 hours ago. 6.2 gets reported right here. So I took a screenshot of it, posted it over on all my pages. Everybody else got notices for it on their apps. So, you know, a 6.0 earthquake range earthquake has struck. So I make my post, share it. Within about an hour of me sharing my post, because the earthquake was up for a little while already, USGS deleted the earthquake and said it was a mistake in their automated feed. They deleted the 6.2 earthquake that was reported next to where I warned for a 6. So people came over to my post and said, oh, somebody must have just thrown it on there. This was the explanation. It's a mistake. And I said, oh, well, I can forecast mistakes then. Because this is like the hundredth freaking time that this has happened where I warn for a significant earthquake or a rare earthquake to strike. And it strikes, gets reported by all the system, and then some human comes in and deletes it and says it's a mistake. Let me give you three examples of that that happened on the east coast of the United States when I issued warnings for 4.0 level of earthquakes to strike Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina. Three different times. Over the course of two to three years, I warned for a 4.0 earthquake to strike down here in South or in the South United States in Alabama, and then a 4.0 earthquake struck right off the coast out here off the East Coast, and I, they reported it as a 4.5 rare earthquake. I issued a warning for a four to strike in Alabama, then a four strikes off the coast of the East Coast right there, one state away. They delete the quake. At, well, first of all, I put the information out. Stays up for a few hours. After so-and-so talks to so-and-so, all of a sudden, they came in and deleted the quake and said it was a military blast. And they must be, this was the explanation, they're most likely testing ships out there for explosions. To, and they do big blasts underneath the new aircraft carriers to see if it tears out the bottom of the ship or not. That's what they said. And I said, okay, so I can forecast military blasts? And everybody laughed. A few months l later, six months, maybe a year at the most, I issue a warning for a 4.0 earthquake here in Georgia. And it was based on the fours coming across the plate. And then a 4.0 earthquake strikes out here in the ocean again. And then they changed it to a military blast again. The third time they did it was here, when I issued a warning for a 4.0 earthquake to strike here. And out here in the ocean, the 4.0 earthquake gets reported. And they changed it into a military blast again. And on the third time, I said, obviously, I've got an antenna built into my head. And I'm able to see when they're doing secret military blasts that nobody knows about. It happened again last week, by the way. I issued a warning for a 4.0 earthquake over here at Delaware. And a 4.0 earthquake strike struck out here off the coast. And now they're trying to say it was a military test. So, back to it. A mistake. A misquake. So we've got a misquake up here that I'm a misquake forecaster. This has happened hundreds and hundreds of times at this point. For rare locations, like I said, over on the East Coast, it's rare locations in Europe. And mistake, 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 mistake. Enough to where we even almost made a t-shirt last year to sell on the Dutch Sense merch shop that says misquake forecaster. I could even start my own consulting firm 
and go and get hired by any corporation in the country or in the world and be able to walk into a cubicle farm and just look across the vast cubicle farm of people and point to some row in the back and just say, you know, you're going you're gonna to trip over your power strip there next week and it's going to cost the company a lot of money because you're going to sue and it's going to go to court for da-da-da-da-da and you're going to get such and such settlement. And then a week later, it's a true accident. They trip over the power cord and they fall and they go and they sue and everything happens. And you would have to tell me that's chance. But as the consultant, I would charge you my fee. Because you would have to tell me that I can forecast mistakes and military tests. So what's going on? Well, there's two possibilities. One, the earthquake hit and they came in and deleted it. They don't want to confirm earthquake forecasting. The other is more nefarious. And that would be that there's somebody there at the USGS who's watching my forecast and my broadcast, and they put it on there to screw around, to try to instigate a video to get made, for me to come out and be like, oh, look, right next to where I issued the warning. And then they come back and say, oh, it's just a mistake. Either way. Or third possibility is that it's a hacker. Hacking it in. You know, an earthquake out in the ocean. Yeah, that makes sense. Go prove Dutch since right by hacking in an earthquake that doesn't matter somewhere in the ocean? Yeah, I don't think so. Although it is a possibility that there's a hacker that's hacking it in. But that would be some a hacker to help me? Why wouldn't they help me with all my shutdowns? Why wouldn't a hacker help me with a real earthquake somewhere, somewhere significant? It doesn't make sense. So the only answer now is that there's either a person doing it, putting it on the feed to mess with me, but they're messing with the whole world by doing that because you all got your 6.0 notices. Or I can forecast mistakes. So either I can forecast mistakes, legit, which is so bizarre and I, I don't believe that. Two, a person did it, put it on the feed to try to screw everything up and cause a problem. That's believable. Or three, someone hacked it in to try to make me look good? I didn't even make a video on it. But they deleted it. And people tried to tell me that the USGS doesn't delete earthquakes where I issue warnings. They said I was paranoid and that it doesn't happen often. But yet here I have hundreds of examples of them doing it only in areas where I issue warnings. So either somebody's putting them on and deleting them off to be a jerk or somebody's deliberately not reporting the quakes and re- changing them to be mistakes when they are happening. Either way, it's horrible. And I have to say something about it. I really shed a tear over it yesterday because I feel hopeless about it. I feel like there's no way I'll ever win. I'm up against government agencies and paid pets and hired hands and weird groups. and That's just the tip of the iceberg. I mean... If you knew what was going on, you would just, you wouldn't believe it. All over earthquakes, it's so bizarre. They must worship earthquakes. There must be a group of them that worship earthquakes, and it's real, like, magical to them, and they, you know, don't want the magic to disappear with with the science on it, you know. Anyway, let's get back to it. A spread of earthquakes is going across, check it out, equidistantly spaced across the whole Mideast. From the Gulf of Aden across into Iran, up into Azerbaijan, or Turkmenistan, and we're east by southeast of the Caspian Sea. Now, a 4.4, a 4.2, and a 4.7, they're all about the same size. They're within a hair of a point of each other, spreading across the whole region. We get back over here, and we focus back in on Turkey, where it's fours going across Turkey, which is good, but at the dead end, we go up into Europe, and now we're starting to move in Italy. We're moving in Greece. So let's go over this, the plate boundary map. Italy, Greece, Turkey, Iran, Gulf of Aden. What do they all have in common? Gulf of Aden, red line. Iran, red line. Turkey, red line. Greece, red line. Italy, red line. Let's go compare. It's a perfect match. It's going around all sides of each plate boundary and focusing back in up here at the Aegean Sea. Hence my warning for the Aegean Sea for this week to go back up. Could be a full magnitude higher and it should be significant in the Aegean Sea, enough to get, cause damage. 6.0 plus, 6.5 plus. 
Central and South America, let's talk about this. Equidistantly spaced earthquakes again. We're going to go from the United States, check it out, 4.5, 4.2. We go down to Mexico, 4.5, and 4.2, spread out. Then we go over to the east, and we have a 4.6. Now guess what? If you take the 4.5 plus the 4.2, you get 4.62. So, cumulative total going over to Venezuela. And we talked about Venezuela in my last update. Where to watch? Right there. Pointed right to it. Well, we're moving over to it now. We'll get to the 4.7 in a moment. Which, by the way, if you take this 4.6 plus this 4.5 plus this 4.2, guess what it equals? It equals 4.75. And that's exactly what we got out here at the X. So there's a standing wave flowing from the United States down across Mexico, over and out to the east, all the way to here. Standing wave about the same size. Again, if this was a wave, you would see the wave height being about the same size from the United States all the way over to the edge and back. Now the edge goes down across the plate boundary and down to the south, same size quakes. We're looking at everything 3.0 and greater. Look at it. 4.4, 4.4, 4.6. Wouldn't you say that 4.4 and 4.6 are just like this 4.5 and 4.6? And the spread really, now that you know what to look for, you can see it. It's a standing wave spread out across the whole plate boundary from the United States down to South America and all the way east to our letter X. It's like a giant triangle right now of quakes pointing out to the pinnacle tip of the biggest one of the bunch. Or another way to look at it is this. United States, Mexico, Central America... South America, far South America, and out to the pinnacle tip out here at the plate boundary. You see it here now? Equidistantly spaced, a standing wave of fives, or upper fours, going across the whole area in a day. How much energy do you think it would take to move this whole area like that? A lot. To move a whole portion of the planet on a 4.4 to 4.7 level in a day? Where's it coming from? It's coming from over here. The same thing that's displacing it this way out over towards Europe. And look, 4.4 and 4.7. And a 4.5 in another triangular -like shape, which is just spreading out. What's going on here? It's like forking out like a river where you reach to a fork and it spreads always. Okay, United States. So, you know, Alaska, do we check it off the list? No. No, Dutch, it was a mistake. All right. All right. Whatever you say, Mr. Belvedere. Whatever you say, Jeeves. I'm just here to report on the quakes. Well, and do forecasting separately, but in this case, we're reporting on the quakes. So, did the quake hit? That's the question. And the answer is, I don't know. People told me it would show on the spectros. Oh, yeah, really? Oh, man. Yeah, just like those big, long red tails for go on for multiple spectros across whole regions and they report it in as a four or they don't report it at all. That's why I don't trust the spectros. Sometimes nothing shows and a big earthquake hits. And other times, a big earthquake hits bright red across multiple stations on the spectros. And they put it in at like a 3.9 or a four and that's it or they don't even report it at all. So spectros, look, same info from the same people, gate kept. But anyway, Spectro doesn't show it. Now, private seismographs, I think, might show it, but I can't use those to prove my case. Like, if I want to prove, I'd be like, hey, look, the earthquake hit where I issued the warning. Look, here's private seismographs that show it. I know the public ones don't show it, but you guys would all be like, oh, Dutch, I don't know, man. Like, take a private seismos, you could be, like, in on that. So, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, if I can't use it to prove my case, why would I try to use it to you know, disprove it? So... And my case is that they're deleting the quakes where I'm issuing the warnings. That's what, at least what it seems like. Not what it seems like. That's really happening. It's just, you'd have to tell me it's chance. That's your only explanation. It's your only go-to is that you could say that it's chance. But if it keeps happening all the time, then it ceases to be chance. And it becomes a regular occurrence. Now, let's, and, and if that's the case, I can forecast mistakes, by the way. So if you're saying it's chance, then, well, okay, I can forecast mistakes then. Because I, I have hundreds of examples of it. Let's go down to the south. Down to Southern California. And go look up the earthquake that everybody contacted me about. That said that they felt it across the area. Thousands of felt reports. 
4.5 and Swarm, but where? And the gap. Oh wait, this is from Geophone Potsdam. Let's go get the info from the USGS. We'll just grab one from right in the middle. It doesn't matter. Here, here, uh, three. So we warned at the end of gap and it expired two days ago. Let me show you where we warned, where it expired, and where it just hit. Because this, it actually does matter. So if I warn down here and it doesn't hit, which I did. I warned down here, it didn't hit. Two days later, boom, it hit. We warned Anza Gap. There it is. Barajo Springs. I couldn't pronounce it right. Whatever. It was in the topic of my discussion uh, this past week. So now it hits right next to it. What's there? Well, there is the volcano where the star is. That's the actual volcano. That's Salton Salt Buttes itself. So I warned next to Salton Buttes. It's a matter of 25 miles. I'm trying to get it down to 200. But I'm several days off. Now this is the exact magnitude we were looking for. Upper four. Anyway, here's Salton Buttes from the Smithsonian. If you've never seen this, you can pause it and read it. I think you can pause it. Right next to it are a bunch of geothermal drill points and all these geothermal wells following the pipelines. So they drill where the pipe the pipelines go out. They drill down. They go down, inject water to get steam and bring it back up and turn the turbines. Anyway, I warned right next to it on the Anza Gap, slow slipping, and all the signs were there this past week. The line of earthquakes coming down from the north along the coast. The line of earthquakes coming down the California-Nevada border. And how big did we go? We went up into the four range up here. I don't even know if that's still on the feed. Hold on. Hold on. No, it's not. Anyway, we, we this is last week. So coming down the coast and coming down the border, we focused in on Southern California this past week. The warning expires. Boom, the earthquake hits. Story of my life, right? It's like being a weatherman and you're expecting the hurricane to make landfall on Monday morning. And it's Tuesday morning or Wednesday morning. And you're like, err. Okay. Now, let's talk about the other earthquakes which struck. Because that's not all that we're dealing with. We have the four in Southern California, but there's other activity. For instance, a more rare earthquake over here in New Mexico. La Jolla, New Mexico. Well... I think there's something here nearby. Let's go take a quick gander and see if there's anything worth mentioning over in New Mexico. I'm going to get a sip of my coffee. Looks like I have a few other place marks here from other events which happened previously. Wow, a 3.7 earthquake in 2017. I wonder if there's anything else here marked nearby. What's this? Roads out in the desert. You ever see this where they build the big subdivisions out in the middle of nowhere? Well, they build the roads for a subdivision. It's very odd. It's almost like they were already there. Now, I do think there's a few other things here nearby, like right over here. I'm pretty sure. Hold on. Hold on. This might not be it, or maybe it is. Yeah, it is. Sure enough is. The Very Large Array. The VLA. Now, you may have seen this in the movie Contact. I, I Maybe it was this one. If it wasn't this one, it was one like it. And it's got the railroad tracks here. And they'll move these dishes, or they'll add or remove them, take add more in. Now, they use part of this array, part of it now, to listen on high frequency, and they used it for the HARP experiments where they were beaming off the moon and Jupiter a few months back. So a few of these dishes are part of a different network that it listens on 10 megahertz or so, at 10 megahertz, for any kind of return signal coming back. So these are like big ears that they're listening with, and the wave reflects back to Earth. I mean, I'm sure they could have other stations on Earth that could do this, but... They use this one in particular. I'm not saying they're doing experiments there now, but right next to it is a new earthquake, 3.1, where the other three struck. Now, you also know there's the Lucero Volcanic Field. What a name. Lucero. The Miocene to Pleistocene Lucero Volcanic Field contains basaltic cinder cones, small shield volcanoes, and tough rings. 
scattered over a 2,000 square kilometer area? Wait, that's got to be all these up to the north. Look at that. Okay, all right. Anyway, we're right next to it. It's pretty obvious. Next to the VLA, that's where the rare quake is. It's on the edge of the craton that they built the VLA along it. Very odd they did that. Now, we have the same sized quakes down in Texas. And then once we get over to Oklahoma, we've taken a step down. A new change. The new Madrid seismic zone has started to show a little bit of swarming. Not, well, moving, not swarming yet. We have four earthquakes. Anytime we get 10 or more earthquakes in a short period of time at a spot, I consider that a swarm myself. But I'm looking for 5.0 level activity to come into Texas. 4.0, 4.5 into Oklahoma the first in months. And a swarm on the New Madrid seismic zone, as well as a 4.0 range earthquake over in Virginia. So a 5, a 4, and a 4 going across the plate plus a swarm on the New Madrid is what I'm looking for. Hasn't happened yet. But the line of earthquakes has. It's coming down through, oh wait, hey, check it out. Southern Colorado got hit down in Trinidad, Colorado again. Just to the east of Trinidad, let me show you. It's literally right here to the north. Turn on our borders and labels. There we are. Here's Southern Colorado. You see this? Okay. Here And Trinidad is right here. There's Trinidad. And our earthquake's coming in right next to Trinidad. I think on the left side or west side, I mean, of Trinidad. I say, I say east side. So on the west side of Trinidad, where the earthquakes are coming in, we have a whole boatload of pumping operations. And they just go on and on and on through the, through the miles and miles of the foothills and mountains. And they're, again, just keep going and going and going. Every one of those little cutouts is a different oil or gas well. Okay, that's where the quakes are in Colorado. Southern Wyoming is the same thing as Southern Colorado. If you've ever driven up through there, you already know this. You've, you've got the big refinery up there for Sinclair, but, man, it's just oil well after oil well from Northern Colorado up into Southern Wyoming. I shouldn't need to take the time to show that to you. You guys can go look it up if you need to. Same for over in Oklahoma. Every single one of these earthquakes is next to a drill point, and you can go verify that if you need to. You go pull the coordinates, and you'll find that drill point right next to it. So Texas, Oklahoma, Colorado, Wyoming, all of these quakes, the only one that's not next to a drill point is the biggest of the bunch. Well, 3.1 to 3.2, 3.1 to 3.2. And it's next to the VLA, the very large array. Okay, it could just be chance on the VLA, but still. Now up to the northwest, diagonal line of quakes coming into Yellowstone. However, Yellowstone Swarm has died out. Look where it was up off the screen a couple days ago. Now, that's going away. But as it goes away, the wave goes and spreads out, goes down, and back into the Midwest. So while Yellowstone drops down, guess who goes up? Well, you see it. It's happening now. Yellowstone went down. Now down on the south edge of the Craton. It went up. Back up to the northwest we go. Nothing's changed in Washington. So we have Mount Rainier with a handful of earthquakes and one lone microquake down at Mount St. Helens. That's it. Out here in the Puget Sound, one from yesterday. Up to the north, 3.4, quarry blast. That has to be the biggest quarry blast. My God, they had to be detonating on the Craton itself. Anything else? No. Let's go down into Oregon and go look this one up, see what's going on. Lacombe, Oregon. Okay, well, now, first of all, it's at 20 kilometer depth. It's down in the plate. So it's not an explosion from humans on the surface. By the way, those explosions, they pulled them all off the feed. Somebody talked to somebody, man. They pulled them all off. So, I mean, all you have to do is watch my video. And you, I mean, if you're into geophysics or geology or something, You'll be raising your eyebrows. You're like, what? Oh, no, 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 the explosions. He's right. There's something weird going on with that. And then they'll just pull them so that people don't ask. Serious. They don't want to panic people. I don't want to panic people. I just want you guys to see if there's an explosion. We go look it up, see if there's a quarry there. If there's not, then you would start to ask questions. 
Okay, here at Lacombe, Oregon, there's not much to mention except for the subduction zone right off the coast that goes down underneath here. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on, sneeze. I got a sneeze incoming, hold on. Oh my god. I'm glad I hit uh, mute on that. You probably got to see it. You, you got to see the, the audio on it. It went all the way up. It would have maxed out your earphones. <laughs> oh, we're live. Screw it. Bill O'Reilly. Why don't they ever... These people aren't human. They never sneeze. You ever hear... You ever anybody sneeze on camera on TV ever? Weatherman's doing the update. Weatherwoman, meteorologist. Like, hot you. You're like, oh, dude, sorry, man. I'm just... Never happens. They're not human. All right, let's go down to the south. California. Speaking of not being human, let's go down to California. Ha! <laughs> uh, I always get off the rails by the time I'm in California, but that doesn't matter because everybody there is already off. Okay. So we start up here in Northern California. I've got a warning. Go Listen, guys, seriously now. I got a warning going for a 5.5 up here. If it strikes out in the ocean, won't matter at all. People will feel a little shaking. Won't be a big deal. It'll be out in the Juan de Fuca. If it strikes on land, it'll knock things off shelves. It'll cause cracks in drywall and plaster. I want you to be ready for it next few days. Now, I don't think it'll knock out power. I don't think it'll be a big disaster. Knock on wood, 5.5 is enough to cause localized damage around the earthquake up to 50 miles out. So Northern California would keep an eye on it. It's pretty rural up there. Humboldt County, the weirdos and all the hippies. So anyway, we go down across out of there and there's two lines of earthquakes. One spreads out across over to the California-Nevada border and makes a beeline down to the south. You see that? It makes a literal diagonal line from Northern California's valley and splits across and goes down to the border. Okay. Now you also see at that very point, it breaks off the, the line of earthquakes, goes down to the south, clusters north of the Bay Area, spreads across the creeping section, and now we're down in Southern California with all of the Southern San Andreas and the Garlock moving. That's a change. So here's what I've got for you on California. Northern California, do. We're being pushed from up here. The push, the wave, is currently spreading down the California-Nevada border and down all of California now, down to Southern California. It's connected all the way across. This normally doesn't happen. Normally, the flow of earthquakes comes down here to where the 0 0.8 is, and it jumps over across the valley, over here, and then goes out and over this way, over to Texas, the flow. But we have a big push coming in. Big push is going down along the coast on the San Andreas, down through the creeping section, and the wave is carrying on momentum down the San Andreas, past where we jump off. Now down here, down to the south, this is the new change. This line of quakes, which I'm highlighting here, going down and back up the Garlock Fault. That's the change. Normally this would jump over and go to Ridgecrest, over next to the Mojave. I'd like to go look up the quakes, see where they're striking, since they're new, and we don't normally see them down this far unless there's a big push. Well, now this is not to be confused with Los Alamos... New Mexico. However, this location was used to ship nuclear weapons. I think they chose it on purpose. Los Alamos with the whole nuclear Manhattan project in a different state. And then you have Los Alamos here in California that just so happens right next to it to be... Well, I mean, we have two different things. We've got the oil and fracking and pumping operations. And then down here, let me just show you real quick. Right over here. This is where we do all of our, well, space launches at Vandenberg. And the Vandenberg started with all their nuclear bomber launchings and their Minuteman missile launches for nukes. And Los Alamos, California, is right next to Vandenberg. You'd have to tell me that's chance, right? Okay. Anyway, there's the earthquake you see in Los Alamos. And it's just a little town where they would be maybe doing shipping through. Of, you know, if they're going to ship nukes, they have to ship them through here on the railroad. So it would make sense that they would have two places named Los Alamos tied with the nuke project and nobody would know which one was which. Anyway, what's around Vandenberg? Look at this. See all these? What are those? Since we're in California, Jake Paul quote, look at that. 
oil and gas all the way around the base. So the oil and gas companies have their drill points on the properties of the base going all the way around it over to the east. And here's the next pumping operation over to the east, which believe it or not, let's just zoom in and show you. Look at this. There, there's the well, but look at the rolling foothills there. I mean, it's like beautiful California kind of thing. I wonder if we have a view of the well from a distance. See what it looks like there. Maybe it was all brown and dried out there. No, looks absolutely beautiful. Look at that. And then kind of hidden over there, you got your well. Nestled out there in the foothills somewhere. Somewhere over here. Can we see it at a distance? No. But isn't that beautiful? So people like to think of California as being a brown wasteland of, you know, like a you know, liberal wasteland. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, here's a bunch of... Uh, you like that? You like that? Pipeline compressor station, oil and gas next to the drill points there. That's where we start the one. Then we go down here along the coast. Isla Vista, California. Two kilometers east, southeast of Isla Vista. Well, there's more here. Put the coordinates in and show you. So starting at Lompoc, here, over to the west, and here, along the coast, do you see the circle out here? Let's go zoom in on the circle. Wow. An offshore oil rig. Oh, wow. Another one. You know, I mean, how many are we going to be next to? It's just one after the other after the other. Now we are along the coast. I always look six to ten miles. I'm just wondering if they have any more here that were along the coast that they have either stopped completely. Hey, what's this? What's this place? All the pipelines and everything. What's going on there? Is it a water treatment facility of some kind? Well, why don't we have a gallery or any kind of image on it? What is this place? Oh, no. It's a giant gas storage field. Dirt. Dirt, 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 dirt. Come on, guys. Sing the Durr song. We can just make it up as we go along. Sing it to your favorite tune. Gas storage field. Do I even need to go on? My God. How did the professionals miss all this? Let's go over here along the coast. Oh, hi, California. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. Yeah, there'll only be a few people who get the oh, hi, Mark joke. You have to be an internet veteran to even know what I'm talking about there. Never mind. Okay, uh, where are we? Let's back this out and see. Do we have anything here worth mentioning? Oh, wait. Right here across the freaking road is our oil pumping operation that carries on next to Lake C Casitas. Okay, anyway, let's show you what the oil pumping operations look like so you know what to look for when you come in to verify. If you come in to verify. You should go in to verify. I mean, I'm not going to just say, oh, there's an oil pumping operation and not show you. So it goes on the hillsides here, and they're kind of hard to see. Because, and look how many there are. Like one, two, three, four, five. Five just on that one pad. Five drill points. And then you see it just goes all the way down the hillsides. And it goes across the valley. So here, all the way over, and it just keeps going off screen to the east, and it jumps across the valley this way, over to across the valley. Now I'm just wondering if there's some over here on this side of Ohala at all. When's our imagery date? 2021? So imagery from like two years ago. Oh, it's uh, hiking trails there. Okay, all right. They're not going to drill directly at the hiking trails. We're close enough. I always look 6 to 10 miles. So the last one would be a 1.2. Let's just go up and look over. It's on the east side of Ohio. I, I Let me pull the coordinates because there'll be people who want to go look this up. This is at a negative 0.1 kilometer depth. So all of these spots that are being hit now by the arrival of the wave are being struck next to drill points or very close to them, close enough that I would think it's suspicious 
that the wave is seeking out those points. Alamo Mountain. Drill points are down here. That's pretty far. This is over six miles now. We're on the San Andreas Fault directly. Another trailhead. What's this? Well, now that's interesting. That's interesting. What do we got going on here? Ah. Another one of these national forests that are shaped like triangles. With an oil pumping operation on one side. and Wow. This is right where we're coming to the pinnacle of it. Okay. Now those are faults. Though you could look at it this way. Is that it's coming down from the north. And that's a fault where it comes together on two faults. So while it looks like it's a triangle from one way. It's a letter V from the other. Either way. It's a sign that the wave is coming down and reaching to those points. And that's why oil, 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 and oil, and then one lone one out there on the fault. Wow. Oil, 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 oil. I'm not against oil and gas, but you got to understand that when this wave is coming down the San Andreas, let me show you the San Andreas. So here's California. If you're new here, just bear with me for one second. I'm going to turn off all the place marks and everything. Here's California. Here's the San Andreas. You can see it. It's diagonal line in the plate itself. Okay. Now, the wave is coming down, and it normally jumps across the valley this way, goes out to the Mojave, and heads over to Texas. But when a big push is coming down, comes down, maintains momentum, goes into here, and that's the spot I just showed you with all the drill points. So now the drill points are moving. It's a sign of the wave coming into North L.A. We already know something's reached down to Southern California. The four struck down here last night, yesterday. The four and swarm. So foreign swarm, big outbreak, incoming wave going down through California. It took two, three days longer than I expected. That's really what it is. Now we're looking for the where the push is coming from to break. So where the energy is coming from up here, the thing that moved all of California on a 4.5 basis and swarm, should break at the top, back where it's all coming from, for up to a 5.5. Okay. So that's just a brief rundown of the quakes. I, again, we're not looking up every quake. Oh, we're not going to be doing a new forecast right now. When you see spreads of earthquakes about the same size go out across a whole region in the course of a day, you know that region's moving. So you should know to expect the next magnitude up as the region shifts more and look between your current sets of quakes. So looks like Saudi Arabia is going to get hit, actually. A rare Saudi Arabia earthquake. Also looks like Iran's going to get hit again where the two rings overlap. We're looking where the rings overlap. So Saudi Arabia, Oman, up to the north. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. That's not the right country. Hold on. What's the name of this country here? Dofar. I said Oman. People get mad. People get mad at me if I, if I, if I... If I get the countries wrong. Okay. So we've got Dofar and Oman. Oh, wait. Dofar is part of Oman. I didn't know that. Okay, there it is. Oman. All right. So right there on Oman. Oman. And then up here to the north, central Iran. Over here to the west, Turkey border with Iran. And Turkey border with Greece. Both sides, where the rings overlap. And then the final spot, oh, uh-oh, Central Italy. This is the one where I would actually want to issue a warning, actually, is, okay, anytime we get above 4.5 in Central Italy. So it looks like a new 4.5 plus is coming into Central Italy here in the next few days. Norcia again, Abruzzo range again, guys. Look, I mean, it's, it's like clockwork. Once you start going up under the edge of the plate boundary and bouncing back, let me show you. Once you start going up in Italy... Here's Europe. The wave comes in, goes up into Italy, starts bouncing back into itself. And the halfway point is central Italy. You're going to break with the same size wave that's coming in to begin with. So if it's a 4.5 coming in and it reflects back into itself, 4.5 breaking on the middle point at central Italy, where the rings overlap right there, where there's a green colored earthquake right now that's a zero or a one. So it's going to be busy. I think we're going to see some significant earthquake activity this week. In light of the deeps, the solar storm, and the previous spread of sevens, which I 
need to remind everybody about. We're dealing with sevens already, and now we hammer in more energy? That means we're going to go the next step up, which is why I'm making these videos. I normally only make a video every few days, maybe once a week. Only when we're going through major seismic unrest do you find me having to freaking make videos all the time. It's so annoying. It is. It, it's a real pain in the butt for me too, guys, for you to have to listen to it and for me to have to talk it. Yes, this is my bread and butter and what I do online. By the way, I noticed some people were bringing up like pay or money or something. Did you guys know I worked for free for seven years fighting the government, getting my whole shit shut down over and over again nonstop for freaking years? Oh yeah, I make money now from YouTube. That's it. Oh, I and Twitch. That's it. I'm not on anybody's payroll. I'm not a government shill. I don't have any private sponsors. I turned down a sponsorship from Halliburton, which got me in huge freaking deep trouble, in case you don't know the story on that. Halliburton, USGS, and IBM formed a freaking puppet company and offered me thousands of dollars a month, three to five grand a month to start. I turned them down. I outed them. My problems really started when I found that and out of them. That was years ago. And they were, they, the guy was actually a nice guy. The guy was offering the, the sponsorship. I don't, I, they just should have told me they were Halliburton in the USGS and IBM teaming up together. And I probably would have been okay with, my viewers probably wouldn't have been, but at least I would have told you. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The oil company, right? Yeah, Dick Cheney's going to be my boss, you know? No, I, that's why I remain isolated in the woods and have moved from place to place and don't talk to anybody. Seriously. Anyway, stranger danger, that applies online as well. Now, do you have an emergency kit and an earthquake plan? Let's get back on track here. Do you have an earthquake plan? You know what to do when an earthquake hits. You're supposed to take shelter underneath a table or a desk. Some people are told to go outside. That depends on your structures. So if you're in a cinder block structure or a brick structure, you may want to have an exit plan. However, if you're going outside, it's actually a worse situation. You have things that are falling from higher. Now, if your building's collapsing, I mean, if you have a choice, you obviously you would get out of the building, but shelter in place is what you're supposed to do underneath something to protect you. Afterwards, you need an emergency kit backpack or bag that you can grab either just before the quake or right after and it's got the things in it that you need to get through for a few days change of clothes set of shoes socks flashlight batteries first aid kit sanitation way to wipe down and get clean basic stuff food and water my god food and water the food the water, you could probably pump. You get one of those water pumps or something. But with the food, I mean, you can go several days without food. But in a disaster, I mean, you want high energy, high protein. You know, the fruits and the, uh, the, the fruit roll-ups, those kind of things that stay good for a long time. I don't, I'm not sponsored by fruit roll-up. I'm just using that as an example. Stuff with vitamin C in it. Stuff with sugars, high energy, high protein. Okay. I'm not going to lecture you. I'm just reminding you I do it at the end of every broadcast so that somebody out there will listen at some point. Anyway, we're doing all right. I hope you enjoy the views that we have here. Let's go through a few of them. Again, Duchess has taken so much time. You know, when I talk about conspiracies, she made me my own background to talk about conspiracies with. we got the Tower of Babel. We've got the... Easter Islands, we, we, we've got it all. Look at that. Uh, pillar of fire. Yeah. I'm telling you this. For when I'm feeling down, we've got the goth background. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. The, the joys of live streaming, the things that people don't ever show you, right? Like all, the, all their available stuff they got. Anyway, this is what you do to kill the time when you're on live 24-7, 365. Or whenever you have an internet connection. I'm really digging the mall scenes here. I and I kind of I kind of want to go. And I want to go in and get, get O'Day Dutch Sense. You know, it's going to have that O'Day Dutch Sense would have a slight skunky smell to it, I think. It might have a slight skunk odor. The Terps are super strong on the Dutch 
perfume. Uh, t- terpume. That, that's what we're going to call it. The Dutch terpumes. Well, I'll make a fortune on that. I can retire from YouTube and I don't have to continue to get paid by the Illuminati. Oh, wait. I guess I wouldn't get paid by the Illuminati. I belong to the club, I guess. You just do it as your own duty. You wouldn't get paid. Okay, anyway, whatever it is. Uh, Okay, you guys be safe. Whoops. You guys be safe, and I'll be back if anything else goes down. We could just keep going. I've got 40 of these. But you get the picture. We've got a lot of pictures. Peace out.